What's up friends, fellow card collectors, Card Hobbies here. And today we're going to do an off-the-cuff. Um, usually I discuss three topics during these off-the-cuff videos. But today I'm going to discuss one. And I'm pretty sure you can figure out what that what that one topic is. Unless you haven't paid attention to the news past 24 hours or so. Um, but the topic I'm going to discuss today is, of course, the death of Kobe Bryant. Along with his daughter Gianna and southern, seven other people... Uh, that passed away in a tragic helicopter crash in California yesterday. Um, I'm try to keep my mic from scratching on my shirt or anything. So, first of all, condolences to the families of all those that lost somebody in that that accident yesterday. Um, you know, I know your world has been flipped upside down. Uh, I've had that happen to me. I've had a loved one pass away suddenly, unexpectedly. Um... And I know it just turns your world upside down. And, you know, my condolences also to, you know, Lakers fans, any big fans of Kobe Bryant out there. I know his death probably affected you. You probably felt like you lost a friend um, yesterday as well. So my condolences go out to you. Uh, yesterday was probably a tough day for a lot of people because Kobe Bryant was a legend of the game. I personally wasn't a fan of Kobe. Uh, I didn't really respect his game, how good he was until towards the end of his career and he got close to retiring and I, I was like, okay, yeah, this guy was pretty good. This guy was a legend. Um, I'm not the biggest NBA fan. I'm a very casual NBA fan. Watch during the playoffs. I don't really follow what's going on during the regular season or whatever. Um, I'm just, yeah, not the biggest basketball fan. I don't collect basketball cards. Um... Don't know much about, you know, rookies and the draft and all that. Don't really follow college basketball all that much either. But, you know, Kobe was a was a talent that transcended, transcended the sport. Uh, I remember yesterday, it was probably about an hour or so after I got the news that Kobe Bryant had passed away. Um, I was talking to my mom, and I asked her, I said, you know who Kobe Bryant is? And she said, the basketball player? And I was like, yeah. So, you know, my mom's a... 70 year old woman from the Philippines, she knew who Kobe Bryant was. She doesn't watch basketball at all. Uh, she's not a big sports fan of anything, but she knows the big stars. You know, she knows Tom Brady and, uh, you know, big stars like that. She doesn't know who Mike Trout is, but she knows who Kobe Bryant is. And so that shows that he was a personality that transcended sport and not just sport in America, but culturally worldwide a lot of people knew who Kobe Bryant was because basketball is such an international sport it's not an American sport very very international sport so the news of his, his death probably affected a lot of people around the world so my condolences go out to you if you know you're having having trouble you know dealing with the emotions of loss uh, loss is a very very tough thing to deal with especially when it's sudden and unexpected. Um, that's why it feels so surreal. So like, you know, to get into some sciencey terms here, like there's been studies done before of how our brains react in negative situations versus how they react in positive situations. And our brains actually react stronger to negative situations. Like our brain, all the neurons light up uh, really bright in a negative situation and not as many light up in a positive situation. You may wonder why that is. Well, you know, it's a matter of survival thing. Um, it's built into us, uh, you know, from the days where humans were, were hunter-gatherers. And, you know, if you had a jaguar or a lion or a tiger staring at you or a bear, you know, that's a negative situation. You would have to be super aware of that situation and to be able to you know, be able to take action in order to survive that situation versus if you were, you know, a hunter gatherer and you're sitting in your camp and you're getting a back rub or whatever, you know, you don't, your brain doesn't have to have all those neurons turned on to be hyper aware. So when, you know, a sudden death happens to somebody you care about, it can feel really surreal. And by surreal, I mean like it's, you know, it's true, you know, it's happening, but at the same time, you know, it's not happening. Um, or you feel like it's not happening, it's because your brain is super hyper-focused. All your neurons are firing because of that negative uh, that negative event that just happened. 
So, you know, it's a similar feeling as for those of you that were around for 9-11, um, 2001, you know, that surreal feeling as all those events were unfolding. Like it was real, but it didn't feel real, you know. And you'll hear a lot of people say that, you know, when they're dealing with death, that it was a surreal experience. And, you know, I faced the same thing when I lost that loved one 15 years ago, suddenly, you know, unexpectedly. Somebody that, you know, you, I had taken for granted as always going to be there until one day they weren't there. Suddenly, they weren't there and all I had was memories. So, for all you out there that, you know, have struggled with death before suddenly or are struggling with the, the tragic events of yesterday, you know, take care. Um, you know, be with your loved ones, be with people that, that you care about and that care about you because they're your best comfort in any, you know, situation like that of, of death. And death is something each person needs to process individually. There's no one size fits all for dealing with grief. Um, every person needs to, to take it in their own stride, um, because especially those close to the situation, their worlds have been turned upside down. And, uh, you know, a lot of us out there knows what that feels like to have your world turned upside down uh, pretty quickly, you know, in the blink of an eye. So, and you never know, you know, death comes for us all eventually. There's a saying in Stoicism, it's a Latin term, memento mori, which means know that you're going to die. And the purpose of that is to to know that you are mortal, even though sometimes you don't think about it because we're always dealing with these little nuances of the day, working jobs, paying bills, getting stressed out by coworkers or bosses or, or work in general. And those little stresses, they don't matter. They don't matter. Um, all that matters is the memories, you know, that's all we have left of Kobe and Gianna right now are memories. And they're not going to be making new memories for us. So all we have is the old memories. And so you need to live your life that you will be making memories, positive memories, as many positive memories as you can. Have as many positive experiences as you can with loved ones, with neighbors, with, you know, members of your community, with members here on YouTube, members on people on the Internet, you know. A lot of times we forget, you know, we read words on a screen that there's people behind those words. For the most part, there are bots out there, but, you know, you got to remember there's those are human beings on the other sides of those words. Think about, you know, what words you're typing on the screen. Think about the words you're saying and and how it makes other people feel, because you never know when that other person, if it's somebody you interact with on a personal basis, can be gone. And you never know when you can be gone from their life. Instantaneously, in a snap of a finger. You don't expect it, but you're gone. You're just not there anymore. And, you know, imagine you had an argument with a loved one. And that was the last time you spoke to them. Because, you know, all of a sudden your life was turned upside down by their sudden death. You know, you don't want that argument to be the last thing you had with them. And, and and the tables are turned. You never know. It could be you that's that's gone. Do you want their last memory of you to be that argument? No. You know, make amends. Be positive. Try to make everybody's life better, not just your own. Um, All those little arguments, you know, we argue about some, some dumb shit sometimes. We do. As human beings, we'll argue over some dumb shit. That stuff doesn't matter in the end. It really doesn't. Um, you know, all that matters is the memories that we make. So we all got to be on this this world and, and live this life together at this moment in time. So that's why I always say you can only control two things. It's your thoughts and your actions. So try to try to stay positive. Try to spread positivity. You know, try to make everybody's life good. You know, because it's a limited amount of time we all spend here. Very limited amount of time. Um, the average age is, what, 70-something? You know, the average lifespan of a human. So, uh, it's a blink of an eye when you think about it. You know, 70-something years. So, if we got to spend 70-something years, you know, here on this 
on this world and the physical plane. I'm not going to get into religion or metaphysics or anything like that. Um, you know, why not try to make it the best, not only for yourself, but for everybody else as well. And I think for, for the most part, you know, Kobe kind of tried to do that with, you know, being a basketball player, realizing he was a superstar. Um, like I said, I didn't follow him personally. I don't know about his charitable acts and stuff like that, but he mattered a lot to a lot of people. And you can tell that by the reaction to the news yesterday from not just sports figures, but from reactions in general, uh, from all across the world, you know, his, he had a lot of meaning to a lot of people. So you can't say that, you know, he didn't, he didn't do thoughts and actions that just benefited himself. Um, I'm going to leave it there. I think I've rambled enough about one subject, a little bit morbid subject, you know, talking about death and, you know, saying memento mori, you know, that you have to know that you're going to die every day is a bit morbid, but I think it is a valuable exercise for, um, for all of us, you know, to know that our time here is an infinite, you know, memento mori, we're all going to die. Just do the best we can while we're here. Um, not just for ourselves, but for others. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to head over the desk and do a mail day. If you still want to watch a mail day after listening to me talk about death for, what, 11 minutes now? Um, but yeah, let's head over to the desk and do a, a mail day. It was a trade from Beckett. Real short mail day, and then I'll let you get on with your way. Appreciate you spending your time with me today if you listen to this whole thing. Remember, your time is valuable, and if you spent it watching this video, I really appreciate it. But, uh, see you at the desk. Okay, guys, we're back here at my desk for a real quick mail day. Uh, got this on a trade from, uh, the Beckett website. So, let's go ahead and take a look at these cards I got in trade. Uh, apologies for the, uh, somber opening to this video. Um, the somber off-the-cuff I did today. Apologies to that, but back to business as usual. Baseball cards. So let's take a look at what we got in here. Okay. So this was a trade on the Beckett site. Of course, got me some Hall of Famers. And I traded away some uh, other Red Sox cards. The other party wanted a few of the Red Sox cards I had listed on there and offered to send these in. So we have a Ted Williams Diamond Kings. Try to get focus there. This one is numbered out of 25. This is from 2015. 2015 Diamond Kings. Pretty cool Ted Williams there. Sent it in a red bordered top loader. It's pretty cool. We got a George Brett Don Russ Threads. Come on, camera, focus with me. George Brett Don Russ Threads. There's the back of it. We got Charter Member Stadium Club George Brett. 91 Stadium Club Charter Member cards. I don't have any of these, but I do now. Uh, I've seen the ones that say members only, but these are the Charter Member uh, series. Is a Carlton Fist charter member, Ricky Henderson charter member. Trying to get to focus. Tired of fighting my camera. There we go. Pretty cool, Randy, Ricky Henderson picture there. Really like that one. And then this one from the other side, a 939 dot 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 and counting. This is a members only parallel. So this is not a charter member. Got a Ryan Sandberg charter member. Got a King Griffey Jr. National Trading Card Day. This is from 2004 when King Griffey was on the Reds. Pretty cool. We got a National Convention VIP card here for Derek Jeter. From the National, I don't know what year National this was, maybe 2007. But pretty cool. Pretty cool to get some cards like this every once in a while. When you're not able to go to the National, I've never been to a National. And finally, we got a Reggie Jackson Gypsy Queen framed 
This one is numbered out of 499, 417 out of 499. Excuse me, 414 out of 499. Pretty cool Reggie Jackson frame Gypsy Queen there from 2014. 2014. So some pretty, pretty nice little pickups there to add to my Hall of Fame haul. These all will be heading to the binder at the end of the month. I usually do a uh, binder haul video at the beginning of the previous month to show what I've picked up in the month uh, to go into the binder. So appreciate y'all watching. Um, like I said, sorry about the summer note for the uh, prelude to the mail day, but it was a real quick mail day. Hope you enjoyed it. Oh, good to add to the giveaway stash here. Uh, just some cards I picked up in that Fairfield cube that weren't like tore up and damaged. <laughs> That Fairfield was pretty rough. Those are going to go in the giveaway stash. Only a few more days left in the month. And then I'll give all those cards away. Appreciate y'all watching. This is a card, obvious. Uh, remember, you can only control two things. That's your thoughts and your actions. So stay positive. Don't be afraid to tell a loved one that, that you love them. Or to spend time with them. Because, you know, sometimes your time can be up like that. But... I'm going to stop with the somber stuff now. Y'all have a great day. It's card obvious. Peace out.